want to react to some of the top soccer headlines going on in the soccer world this is a little bit tricky in the fact that uh my wi-fi has actually gone down um which is why if you're watching the stream you probably see some of the effects of that going on right now my wi-fi is really really bad so um but we'll try our best aston villa they have agreed with a deal to sign uh aston villa has agreed to a deal to sign amadou onana um amadou onana has agreed to sign with aston villa uh from everton um now obviously this is you know this is a you know this is a position of a need for aston villa they need someone to play alongside John McGinn in there since um, Douglas Luiz has gone to Juventus and Aston Villa were able to complete the signing. Um, it's, you know, nobody disclosed how much it cost, but the sources reported that the deal is around 50 million pounds uh, and, and or 50 million euros. And Villa also did not reveal the length of Amadou Onana's contract. The, Bel uh, the Belgian international um, started his career playing at Hamburg before he moved to Lille. And then, then he made moved to Everton where he played 75 matches for them since joining uh, in 2022. And Onana also has 17 caps for Belgium and was a huge part of their campaign at this European Championships when they were eliminated in the European Championship round of 16 by France and this is a player that's been linked with a lot of the top clubs in in the world or a lot of top clubs in England including Chelsea, Arsenal, United and um, and it's looking like Villa is going to be his next move which I think is a forward move up from Everton. He gets out of that relegation sort of race of a team and he moves up to a team that's playing now Champions League football and that has real, real pedigree nowadays of playing, you know, very, very good football. I think a coach like, um, uh, good evening, he's, he, he's he skipped the name of his head, is the name of his, uh, the, the name of Aston Villa's manager is skipping my head. <laughs> good evening. Unai Emery, I think Unai Emery can really get the best out of him. Uh, get the best out of his ability can get him working good alongside John McGinn and uh, Yeah, I'm, yeah, it's gonna be very very va fascinating to watch uh, Javier Aguirre official he's named Mexico coach, but Something that was rather shocking in my opinion um, But also You know heartwarming if you're a Mexican fan Rafael Marquez He is um, kind of join on um, Javier Aguirre as part as an assistant coach for this Mexican national team. He's actually kind of leave Barcelona's B team to take on this role as the Mexican assistant. Now Javier Aguirre, no real surprise there. You know, there's been reports going on for a while, and the fact that he um, he 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 wants to. Um, he wants to, uh, uh, or Mexico wanted him to replace Lozano. They wanted to make Lozano an assistant coach and elevate him to the head coaching position after the 2026 World Cup. But obviously Lozano, after being the coach of Mexico, is not really looking for that sort of, isn't really t sort of, you know, looking for, you know, doesn't really want to take that sort of jump to, uh, to, uh, uh, being an assistant coach you know that was kind of embarrassing for him so obviously he wasn't going to do that so mexico decided not mexico decided because obviously this is something that they would have only dreamed of but they they approached Rafa's Mar rafa marquez to take that assistant coach job for mexico and he left the barcelona b team the barcelona b team you know the castilla for barcelona to take on the role he was the head coach of that team to take on the role for the Mexican national team as an assistant coach for me, which is, you know, really shows the love and passion he has for his country. And it's something that should be applauded, really very commendable by him. 
great show of character, personality, drive, effort, and shows his love for Mexico. And it's something I applauded because, let's be honest, going from, you know, you just, you know, if you're the coach of Barcelona B team, you're putting yourself in a position to potentially take on the reins at Barcelona one day, you know? That's, that's, that's a high, high role in being the head coach of the team. It's a you know, massive, massive role. And to leave that role to be an assistant coach for Mexico, I mean, you know, in essence, it looks like a downgrade. But it really isn't in the fact that this now puts him in a brilliant position to take over the role of Mexican national team head coach after the 2026 World Cup. Um, and it's actually reported that Aguirre is going to initially take the head coaching job and lead them for two years through the 2026 World Cup before he leaves the role for Rafael Marquez, who will take the charge as they prepare for the 2030 World Cup. So it really shows the real love and, and dedication that he has for his country to leave Barcelona B manager uh, to join Mexico. Uh, when FMF was talking about this move, both moves, they were saying Javier has a, str this is what they said, Javier has a strong track record with experience and undisputed leadership in team management, while Rafa has great skill and talent development. Uh, but Javier Aguirre uh, led Mexico to the round of 16 in multiple World Cups in 2002, where they lost to the US, that famous Dos Acero game, and then the 2010 World Cup, where they lost to, um, where they lost to uh, uh, Argentina in that round of 16. And, and um, uh, while speaking um, about it, the director, of, uh, the director of the Mexican national team, Julio Davino, Daviano said, Aguirre is without a doubt the Mexican coach with the longest and most recognized career abroad. And he, has, and he also has in-depth knowledge of the processes in national teams. Um, Rafa is one of the most important players in Mexican history with a great national and international career who began his coaching career with an emblematic team. We have offered him to be the assistant of, until 2026 so that he can contribute his knowledge and then assume the leadership. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's it's great for him. Um, now Javier Aguirre and you know Rafael Marquez, they have you know they have a journey in front of them. They have a Mexican team that really lacks that real quality. Let's be honest, they don't lack they lack the quality of previous Mexican teams, and it's the worst Mexican national team that I've seen in my lifetime. Which kind of makes the move that Rafael Marquez from going from Barcelona B team to Mexico even more surprising to me. I know he's taking over after the 2026 World Cup, but. There's no real shining light at the end of the tunnel with this Mexican national team. This is a team with a real, real lack of quality. And there's a, this is a huge jump for Javier Aguirre. Now, the first thing that they need to get ready for is um, uh, these friendlies that they'll be playing in the U.S. against New Zealand and Canada. And, and then, um, and um, yeah, Javier Aguirre, this is a, you know, he's a, he's an intense coach. He has a great experience of playing, uh, coaching a lot in Europe, as he talked about there. And he's also coached other national teams like Japan and Egypt. So this is a, you know, a well-decorated individual, well-decorated manager. And he really can attest these Mexican players. I remember the lead up in the 2010 World Cup. They played like three friendlies in one week in preparation for it, where they took on the defending champions Italy, they took on England, they took on Netherlands, um, like three top European teams within a week. And he was and he was so clever in the way that he played one eleven in one game and played a whole different eleven two days later, and then played uh, a combination in the third, which he managed the minutes really cleverly, and he did a great preparation for them and really tested them against top top level. There was you know he tr you know he challenged the players to go play in Europe. He you know most of it you know well, he was the first manager really in there that brought you know. A, you know, a high amount of European-based players. Before Javier Aguirre, it was, you know, mostly the domestic. It was all Mexican players were playing domestically. So I think this is a coach that's going to that's gonna demand the next level, demand greatness, and he has huge pedigree, and he is one of the more successful Mexican managers there has been. But at the same time, this is not the, this is not really the, uh, the holy grail of moves for Mexico national team, because let's be honest, He's only made it to the round of 16, and 
that's what Mexico, you know, that's what Mexico are trying to get past the El Quinto Partido. They hasn't been pounded around six, six. They haven't been pounded around the sixteen in such a long time. I think that it's going on. It's been since what ninety four now. It's a ridiculous, a long amount of time, and they want to take that. Um, they want to take that really that next step. Um, then the final topic of the day: Chelsea. They signed U.S. MNT prospect uh, Caleb Wiley, um, nineteen year old. Uh, Chelsea announced this on Monday. Wiley will join Chelsea on a six year deal from Atlanta United. Um, from Atlanta United. Uh, he's played 77 games as a left back for Atlanta United, scored six goals and five assists. The transfer value was around $11 million. Um, when speaking about this, uh, uh, Atlanta United's vice president, Carlos Bocanegra, said, Caleb epitomizes the pathway that we envisioned when we started the club. Born and raised in Atlanta, he joined our academy at 11 years old, played for ATL United 2, and went on to earn every step in his path up to signing as a homegrown. We wish Caleb the best in his next challenge of his career and look forward to following this journey for our club moving forward. We're continuing our efforts to immediately reinvest in the team during the summer transfer window. Wiley actually made his debut for the US men's national team when they drew 1-1 with Mexico and and um, when they when they drew one one against Mexico, and he's also part of the U twenty three team that is going to compete for the Olympics in a few days, and he will be um, and he will be a uh, part of that opening game when they take on France at the Velodrome. So a great way, great chance to really watch him play and see if he's really have that ability to play at the top top level. Thank you guys for tuning into the GMCMC Soccer Podcast by, uh, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support does mean a lot to us, so please uh, remember, guys, to subscribe to the show and leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. Um, we also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. So thank you again. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you once again, and have a wonderful, wonderful day, guys.